I, do we want to, I got to refresh. Um, Daryl, do you want to kind of introduce the adventure and then we'll like introduce ourselves quickly again? Oh, I can't watch myself do this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm. I'm just. Yeah, I'm just trying to check to make sure that we're on. Are, are we a broadcast? Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was yeah. listening to myself. Um, we're live. Yeah, we're live. We're streaming. Mm -hmm. Yes, here we are. I see us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so. I get to be the MC. Uh, welcome to the Archaeological Gaming Convention Year Zero uh, D and D One Shot Game, uh, Murder of the Goblin Guild Leaders. Uh, I am the game master for this evening. Uh, I go by Harusaki Emon uh, on Twitter, and I guess let's. Uh, well, let me let me set up set up the uh, basic background of the story here. We have here the city of Clark, um, and you can see it's a little on a it's on the uh, edge of a river. Now, this city of Clark has a mostly human population. That's the green part here. And I'll even show the little city map. Um, it's mostly humans here, but there are quarters and districts for hobgoblins, dwarves, and goblins. Um, now, humans control most of the city and control most of the government. Um, and then the other sections and neighborhoods here uh, do their own s sort of special contributions. Uh, hobgoblins are mostly hired to do uh, guard work, um, both private and for the city. Uh, dwarves do craftsmanship. And then the goblins uh, end up doing a lot of general labor, but they also do craftsmanship. Um, and in fact, that's part of the setup that each of the goblins, uh, the goblins actually run guilds. So let's see here. Um, so we have shepherds, basket makers, weavers. Uh, we have trappers, leather workers, cobblers. Uh, let's see, soap makers, butchers, brewers, bakers. Let's see here, we got blacksmiths, wheelwrights, lumberjacks. Over here, we have painters, plumbers, diggers, masons. Um, so the impetus for this adventure is that one of these goblin guild leaders has been murdered. Um, the, the murder seems to have been quite violent. Uh, a lot of blood was lost. It's, uh, the scene you know, had a lot of blood in it, and it was, and it was quite clear that that goblin had been killed. Um, However, the city, the city government, um, run again mostly by humans, is sort of dragging their feet on the case. Um, this goblin was a very important figure in the community as one of the uh, guild leaders, and it is up to our four heroes here to solve the case and bring the uh, culprit to justice. Um, and so with that, go ahead. Let's have each of you introduce yourselves. Let's start with a theory. A theory, yeah, that's uh, that's you, Lisa. Lisa, <laughs> oh no, we lost somebody already. Oh, okay. Uh, we'll skip, skip. Michael, go ahead, Michael. Oh, hi, hi. Um, my name is Michael, and I'll be playing uh, Grado Hudrek today, and um, I'm uh, I'm a goblin and a member of the Sheep Friends Guild. Um, I, uh, have gray skin and this wild mane of purple hair that is, uh, really high up and really out there. Uh, I carry a staff with me that's got, uh, little berries and fruits and some, uh, feathers and, uh, and flowers. And I love flowers. I have a great big, uh, where most people would have a sword or shield or something like that in their back. I have a great big bouquet of flowers on my back. It's daisies and dandelions and a few roses and... Uh, and it's all just, uh, I think it's all, all really nice. 
All right, thank you, Michael. All right, let's have the next person, uh, Ellie, playing Genera. Hi, guys. Uh, yep, so my character is a hobgoblin and a monk, and she isn't your traditional hobgoblin. They're usually very um, prideful and uh, very uh, warlike, I guess, too. Um, she... You know, growing up in the monastery has developed a lot of empathy for other cultures and has been living here in the city for a while now. And, you know, some of her friends are these goblins and this murder has really upset her and she thinks that she should do something about it. All right, thank you. Let's have the next person, uh, Nicole, who's playing Hawk. Hi, so my character today is Hawk, who is a hobgoblin sorcerer, uh, who is local, more or less, um, and has a lot of dealings um, and business in the goblin community, because the goblins have had some trouble, kind of live separately from other parts of the city, um, so they kind of turn to people like them um, for magical needs. Um, Hawk is very upset with the way this has been treated at a city level and is looking to bring justice um, and is looking to solve the case. All right, thank you. Um, uh, a theory, is Lisa here? Can you, can you hear me now? Are you? Can you hear me now? I can hear you. You can hear me. Okay, great. Okay, yeah, so I'm Lisa. I'm an uh, archaeologist on the West Coast doing CRM, and I've been playing D&D &D for a few years now, so still kind of a newbie, but uh, a theory is a, the character, she is a half-elf, half-human, raised by a human mother in an elven tavern where she went from being a, an objective observer to a participant observer quite quickly. She um, hung out with the Den of Thieves and learned, uh, she's a rogue, by the way, um, and learned how to uh, thieve and be very stealthy. So she has some good skills in that regard. She also um, uh, never quite fit in, uh, was never really accepted by the elves or by the humans. Um, so she always felt like an outsider, and she sympathizes very much with the goblins and uh, also dwarves and halflings. But humans can suck it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> and elves. <laughs> oh, then I don't know how you're going to handle then with... Um... Oh, yeah, yeah, never mind. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Uh, we'll see. Okay. Um... So, all right then. We we now have the basics of the case and our players now. Um. Okay. I'm. I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Is it? I don't know. I'm getting a little bit of a noise. Do you hear it? Mm-hmm. I'm going to mute myself. Okay. I think it's, up. it's not me. I muted myself. I kept going. Okay. Um, I think it stopped for now. Okay. So we have the basics of the case. Um, what we can do right now is uh, you can ask. I would like the group to ask some questions about. Uh, about the city or about the other more specific circumstances of the case so that we can head you off in whatever direction that you'd like to go. Um, so uh, I'd like to take any questions from the group. Well, okay, I guess well, I'd like to know where did the murder happen? <laughs> I was just going to ask that. <laughs> okay. Do we know? Okay. Yeah. Yes, yes, we already know. Um, so I'm actually taking everybody there. Let's, let's look at my wonderful, wonderful map on graph paper. OK, I'm going to move you to it. All right. So uh, actually, the leader that was murdered would be, yeah, 
Uh, let me see. Yes. Uh, the person who was murdered was actually the leader of the soap makers, of the soft hands. So I'll take you to that. Okay. Um, so if you're looking on your screen, uh, the goblin that was murdered would be uh, this goblin here, this, uh, this gentleman here. Okay. Now, going back to the map here. Um, okay, well, that's the location and that's the uh, specific leader. Do you have any other questions? Yeah, I, I put them in the, the chat. Um, okay. But uh, yeah, my questions were, uh, so we know, do we know where it happened? When did it happen? And do we know who the leader of the soft hands was doing business with? Okay, um, so the murder happened. Now, um, the buildings I have on the map, these are the the headquarters of the guilds, and he was murdered in in the guild hall. Um, and it it seems to have happened at night, um, because they saw him in the daytime, and they found the evidence of it the next morning. Now, for business. Generally, well, in terms of selling, these goblins generally sell to everybody in the goblin community as well as outside of the goblin community. Um, although some of the humans do look down on the goblins, the goblins do do work that's of equivalent quality and craftsmanship. So there are humans that do buy from them. Now, because they are soap makers, they use fat. And so the soft hands do do a certain amount of business with the the trappers, the hide chewers, um, and have some uh, and have some relationships with the skin sacks and the sheep friends um, because they are also working with animals and, and slaughtering them and um, harvesting the fat from them. And the soft hands will then use that fat for some of their soaps and candles. I. <laughs> What? Uh, no, it's funny because I study grease rendering. <laughs> yeah. With animal phone. <laughs> this oh my god, that's new. awesome! <laughs> There's a little yeah, there's some phones. Um, so, so that uh, was well, the, the business with the hide cleaners, the sheep friends, and who else? A uh, skin sacks. So, actually, if you look at the the way I did this map, the what happens is is those who do business with each other or have similar businesses are closest to each other. Um, so uh, right here, so soap makers and butchers are near each other. The trappers and leather workers um, are next to each other, and there are the cobblers who will then use also leather. Uh, sheep prints are on the furthest end because they don't want to be in town. Um, then on the right, if I show this down here, we have like the plumbers and the masons next to each other. The wheelwrights, uh, they they make carts and wheels and barrels. They're next to the carpenters. Um, so you can sort of assume that whoever's next to each other is probably doing business with each with them. Okay. Um, so what are the stakes here, like in terms of uh, for the goblin community? Like, will people if we find if it we find out that it's some kind of rival? business person could this result in like warfare in the town like how delicately do we have to handle the, our investigations well at this moment the the general goblin population is just really in shock they don't know what to do they don't know what to think um the the mayor of goblin town um well quote unquote mayor he he is functionally the mayor but it's not an official title he went to the governor of the city to ask for help and uh and between the two of them hired you um at the moment no one there are no suspicions exactly it's it's still very recent um if it happens to be if it does happen to be uh rival business people the there might be some bad blood, but the divisions 
in Goblin Town don't fall, whatever sort of sections and groups that are in Goblin Town usually don't express themselves violently. Um, so we're not going to so start like moment, warfare. Not mm, there are no sort of uh, signs of that, at least right. not yet. Um, can we go to the murder scene? Yes. All right. Here we go. So you go to yeah. the soap makers. Let's go to the soap makers. Okay. Do you have your map up? I'm only seeing the goblin characters. Oh, sorry. Uh, let me put that up. Sorry. There we go. I see it now. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I'm trying to manage between the uh, the right. map on the stream and the map for you. Um. Well, so. Awesome. Thanks. Uh. All right. So. Uh. So, are you going to go in the morning in the evening? I'd imagine we'd probably want to go when they're open. Okay. So, um, I, I, I'm assuming that you're arriving at about late morning. So, um, you arrive there at late morning. Um, the, the overall business around is still continuing, but it seems light. And you do feel, you can smell some of the vats boiling. And you can feel a little bit of the grease. Um, that emanates from them, but you see several several goblins uh, there that are just sort of standing around, um, and almost all of the workers that you see there, they have a similar haircut or hairstyle as the leader, in the sense that they take the some of the fat and they actually scent some of the fat. Um, with perfumes and use it to sort of style their hair up in these um, interesting shapes, um, and that's a, a sign of their guild. So they're goblin greasers. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. <laughs> Rolled up sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right then. Um, so, do you just barge in? Do you talk to people? Go into the. I I'm going to I'm going to walk around the perimeter on the outside and kind of peek in some windows. Okay, you're going to peek in some windows? Like oh. Yeah. I'm not going to go in the front door. Are you guys going in the front door? I mean, I'll be nearby, but Yeah, we're, we're, I'm going in the front door. Okay. Yeah, same. I I I want to look for evidence on the outside of like broken windows or anything. Okay. So, um why don't you go ahead and make an investigation roll? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> what do I find? So is it all of us or just the hearing? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Game over. There's the murderer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you go around the perimeter. Um, there are no broken windows. Um, some of the greases on the windows, um, just it just sort of settles there. Um, you see like random fingerprints from here and there, but there are no marks of uh, hands trying to lift the windows or Jimmy or uh, fidgeting with the windows. You see, you see foot traffic like uh, tracks in the dirt around, but they all look to be uh, goblin. Um, yeah, there, there's. Okay. It just looks like goblins working here. Okay, so I'll come back and I'll tell tell you guys, tell the group that I, it doesn't look like anyone broken from the outside that I could tell. Okay. As we walk through the front door, do we any, see, see any signs of forced entry at all? Um, go ahead. Let's make an investigation check. Oh, I suck at that. Let's see. <laughs> let's see. Investigation. I thought you had a uh... natural one. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm distracted by the smell. I'm so used to the smell of sheep that the smell of fat's sort of getting to me a little bit. So I, instead of actually looking at what I'm doing, I'm taking some flowers from my bouquet in the back and sort of crushing them up and putting them under my nose. <laughs> You're snorting daisies. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so you see, 
uh, you see Gradol Hudrick doing that, um, trying to um, prevent himself from becoming nauseous at the smell. Um, there is a <laughs> there is a, a bookkeeper um, at the front of the desk and it looks up at you with a little bit of surprise and uh, and a, and asks you, "Oh, excuse me, uh, how may I help you?" Oh, hello. We have been hired uh, by the mayor of Goblin Tun, Bill, whatever, um, <laughs> to, to ask some questions about um, the murder here. Would you and your workers be willing to talk with us? Oh, oh, yeah, yes. Um, uh, well, I'm, I'm the one that opens up the shop, so I was the first person to realize what had happened um if you like to talk to some of the other workers I'll, I'll get them for you or shall i just show you the room myself um yeah please uh please show us the room and we'd also like to talk to you um about what you saw because you know first impressions and all okay then well you you can see it for yourself i none of i mean our work is not exactly the cleanest work, but um, we, and we're used to seeing or working with fat and blood, but we just couldn't come to clean it ourselves. Come this way. And she leads you up uh, a set of sort of creaky wooden steps to the second floor of the office. Um... There's a door there at the end of the hallway, and it's closed. Um, she pulls keys out of her pocket and proceeds to sort of jangle and wriggle and, with a little bit of effort, open up the door. And so you walk into the room. Um, the room looks looks like said there have been a there, there had been a struggle. Um, Papers are tossed about. Uh, the the desk is a mess. A few chairs are turned over, and there are um, there are splats splatters of blood on the floor. Um, there is one little piece of something slimy, and uh, in the middle of the room. But you can't quite tell what it is from the doorway. Can I walk in and take a look at the patch of slimy stuff? Okay. So you go in and you look down. Um, uh, are you careful to not step in the blood? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Flowers aren't going to get rid of that. <laughs> so, okay, so... Gradle Hudrick sort of tiptoes and gingerly steps, trying very carefully not to step in the blood, and looks down at this slimy thing. It looks kind of like a large slug, but it's covered in blood. Um, it's kind of thin. Do you wish to look closer, Gradle? Um... I know it's up to you, but because it looks animal, would I be able to do a nature check? Um, you don't really need to do a nature check. I think you'll be able to, f you particularly will be able to figure it out. I'm just wondering if you want to, how closely you want to check it. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll take a close look. Okay. You look very closely at it, and you realize it's an ear, and you know it's a goblin ear. Oh. Uh, um and you can tell it is the ear of um of the guild leader. Let me find his name. I I gave all of them hate names. So this is Seldy Soft Hands ear. Um so is Seldy's what else about Seldy's body? I mean, does, is he missing an ear, or just the ears lopped off? Or can you describe kind of the the position of the body? Uh, excuse me. 
Um, do, can you describe the position of Selby's body? Like, are, so he's missing one ear. Is the other ear there? Or like, how's, how's the body positioned? So that's the thing. You, there's only an ear. That's it. There's nothing else. But they so found the body. Well, there, there's enough, um, there is enough blood here to assume that the person's dead. Someone's dead. And there's an ear here. Okay. Plot thickens. <laughs> <laughs> now we have a missing body. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but with the right potion. <laughs> no. Like, is he really dead? Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay, no. so we've got one ear and a fair amount of blood, signs of a struggle. Um, can we check out? I, I'm uh, so I'm going to check out the papers that are strewn across the floor and kind of see what those are. Um, I don't know what else everybody wants to do. I how how tall is this? A one-story building? It's a two. It's two stories. Okay, I think with my level three rogue, I can climb on the roof. So I want to check the roof. Okay. Um, you do have second story climb work, so I'm just gonna assume you open up the window and just jump out. Go. Okay. And I want to check the second story too. Go through okay. there. Okay. All right. Um, I'm looking for the body or anything. <laughs> Any anything <laughs> unusual up there? <laughs> okay. I don't know so what well. Else is doing. <laughs> um. So, uh, a theory, so I, I'll just have a theory. A theory opens up the window, and then begins to crawl out, and the, um, uh, the assistant, like, oh, oh, you're, you're going out, are, are you going to be, okay, is, is she going to be okay? <laughs> See ya. <laughs> can, I, can I sort of gauge the assistant's behavior a little bit? Figure out if there's anything like she is she nervous that a theory is going out the window for? Okay, so go ahead. You can make an insight check. Okay, insight is one of the things I'm actually good at. Oh, good. Uh, Seventeen plus four. That's uh, twenty-one. Okay, so you have a pretty good read on the assistant. The assistant seems surprised, but she's not, she doesn't seem anxious about um, a theory climbing out onto the roof. She's just sort of bewildered. She just doesn't know what to do right now. Gotcha. Okay, now who who is going to check out the rest of the top floor? Or who's checking uh, papers? I'm, Hawk is checking papers, and whoever else wants to join that. Uh I'll check out the second floor. Okay. And I'll assist on the investigation of the papers if I can if I can use the help action to to give Hawk advantage in her investigation of the papers. All right. Fantastic. So Hawk, go ahead. Uh you can roll uh your investigation. Okay. This is not I don't think I have advantage here, so Ooh, natural twenty. I don't need it. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, all right, and I see your investigation is a plus two. So. No, uh, yes, plus okay. two. Yeah, I need two. Um, okay, now, all right, most of these papers are written in common. Um, most of the official papers, anyway, are written in common. There's a few notes here and there in Goblin. Um, this seems to be mostly, you know, financial records, uh, deliveries, receipts, um, inventory. Um, this is business papers, um, and they just seem to be strewn about. Now, do I notice any? Some of the papers you notice are torn. Excuse me. No, no, that's fine. Like, torn in what way? Like, are they, like, shredded torn, or are they just, like, damaged? They seem... They seem to have, like, a puncture in them. Like, some sharp object went through it and sort of tore into it. 
um, something sharper than a finger, um, but not quite as sharp as, say, a knife. Are we thinking like a letter opener or something like that? Um, a letter opener, uh, like like a that's a pen knife, and that would have a very fairly um, smooth and straight cut. No, no, this is more like um, like a claw. Yeah, a claw, a claw might be a, a good way to describe it. Um, is there anything like going through the business papers? Are there a lot of like debts or any kind of inconsistencies or 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 desperation sort of thing for the business? Is the business doing well? Like, what can we tell from the numbers um, on these receipts? Um, so you're picking up and looking at the receipts, and the assistant steps up and and uh volunteers to explain some of them and it's like this is the receipt for this delivery um and she explains and you can look at the receipts that the business seemed to be doing okay um there really didn't seem to be anything uh, out of the ordinary in terms of the business okay um so uh hawk is going to start asking the assistant about what they saw and um, what happened the day before leading up and what conversations they had with the this person had with uh, the victim okay um so the there did not seem to be anything out of the ordinary um she only said the so the assistant says I don't remember anything out of the ordinary. Um, the, he, at the end of the day, um, I helped close up um, and sell the, the stay behind uh, because he wanted to check on some papers. Um, and he said uh, he was going to go out afterwards and have a little drink. Um, and that's when I left him. Okay. And then I went home. Can I ask the assistant if there are any local, if he was going to go out and have a drink, maybe he was having a meeting at whatever tavern or bar he was going to go to, if he knows where his boss liked to uh, like to drink, or if he occasionally had a meetings, like business meetings with people or personal meetings with people at, uh, at said establishment. Okay. Um, so... For drinking, um, so the the quickest and easiest way to get a drink would have been just to go across the street to the fire boilers. Those are the brewers. Um, they do make alcohol. Um, there is another establishment over here on the, the main road uh, that is pretty popular. Um, and the assistant explains that if he was going to go to some place to, to drink, it would have been this place here at the uh, on the road. Gotcha. Okay. Um, Gridal, what do you think? Do you think we might go there next after we finish interviewing well, these folk? Well, I'm always up for a drink. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so do I see anything on the roof? Okay. Are you buying? So yeah. Yeah, on the roof. A theory. A theory needs to 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 finish her investigation on the roof. Okay, go ahead. And then I'll and come down and Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Um. Yeah, she has skills. So roll roll twenty is doing a, a weird thing. I'll ha we'll have to adjust this later, but um, it's rolling it with advantage. But just just to make it easy, we'll just take the first number. Okay. Um. So it's a twenty-two. Um, you're on the roof, uh, on the roof, on the roof, you actually notice a few scratches on the roofing and tiles and a few drops of blood. Oh, hmm. do I see which direction they came from? Well, the scratches that you see seem to actually come up the roof from the office so like the window that you you just oh, left okay right 
So the, the, the window you just opened and went out, you noticed okay. also similar claw marks, kind of where you sort of lifted yourself up over the, uh, the edge of the roof. And you okay. noticed the trail go up. It went up to the top of the roof, and then it stops. Wow, OK. And I don't see, and I'm looking around on the ground on the outside. I don't see signs of anyone falling or? Nothing. You don't see anything on the ground like that. OK, well, I'll go back down, and I'll get up with the group and tell them what I saw. Looks like a person came from the roof. And then I'm on the second floor. OK. Oh, that's right, yeah. Yeah, so you're just going down the hall and checking, like, all the closets, the bathroom, everything? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, you see some of the other goblin workers um, sort of packaging boxes and things like that. Um, but there are no – there's no blood in here. There are no scratches. Uh, none of the doors seem broken. There doesn't seem to be anything abnormal about the second floor except for the main office where the guild leader was. Okay. And that was the room we were already in, right? Yes. Okay. Then I'll join the others. Okay. So you all gather, I guess, at the, the top of the stairs. Um, the assistant uh, tells you, you know, I, I really hope you solve this. Um, I mean, we're really sad, but we're also really scared. We really don't know what to do. Um, so if you could at least tell us what happened, you know, it would make us feel a little bit better. Um, I, I, I walk up to him and I pull a random flower out of the bouquet on my back. And it's a golden marigold. And I hand him the flower and say, it's going to be OK, buddy. And I give him a kind of an awkward hug. And then step back. Um, I'm trying to remember. Are you are you a tall goblin, a medium sized goblin, or a small goblin? Uh, I it's something that I didn't particularly think of. I think I'd say medium size. Okay. All right. the The assistant like just sort of sort of whimpers a little bit and tries desperately to hold back tears as he hugs them. <laughs> It's okay. Um, it's okay, bye. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hawk, is, Hawk is getting Hawk is irritated and is like, and is like, are we are we investigating a murder or are we freaking Hare Krishna? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. All right. Let, let, let's. And, and I and I turn to Hawk and I say, "Don't worry, I have a flower for every personality." And I pull out this really dark-looking black dahlia-like flower with thorns on it, and I hand it to her and say, "What do you think?" I think no? that this is going to be a long investigation. <laughs> <laughs> at all. all right. <laughs> what did you? It, so, Janira, what did you see on the top of the of the the roof? Oh, oh that was a theory. Oh, theory. Yeah, so I saw yeah. scratch marks, scratch marks, and some blood. So it looked like um, murderer came from the roof or exited through the roof. And I, you know, whether or not the body went through there as well, I don't know. But whoever did this had ability to get up on the roof. Um, so was there any blood? Yeah, there was blood. There were scratch marks and blood through that window. So someone, that's where they came in or exited. Okay. But I didn't see any other signs on the ground outside, so. And nothing on the nearby roofs? If, if somebody wants me to go check out the nearby roofs, if they're really close ones, I can, I can go there. I didn't check those out. Okay, Does so, anyone want me to go take a look? Um, yeah, why don't you and Ethiri go check the roofs um, and see if we can maybe follow the trail. Um, and I'll, I still want to ask people here um, and how and learn more about um, okay. the, the victim. Um, so do would this be a good time to split up? 
So like go to the, the, the bone munchers and the grain grinders? Oh no, the, uh, just the other the other goblins and see if they heard anything or heard any threats against their boss kind of thing. Oh, I meant the, 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 the building roofs, which roofs. Do we want to go there or do we want to go question people at the tavern? I'm cool either way. Or we can all split up. All right, let's go check the let's go check the butcher's roof since it's right next to the soap makers. All right, so you uh, so the group then skips, pops, jumps over to the bone mushers, the butchers. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. <laughs> so uh, I'm just wondering, do you just waltz up there, a walk, or you're just gonna climb onto the roof from the outside? What's your yes. approach? <laughs> I'm going from the outside. <laughs> well, okay, let's let's talk about this as a group. Hawk, did you wanted to go talk to more people? Yeah, so Hawk is staying behind with the soft hands and is going to ask some questions about the um just like business practices and any any known enemies. Okay. Um and does what does Hawk find out when they when she's asking the other workers? Okay. So you talk to the other workers. Um, some of the, uh, there are some of the workers. Um, they they give you sort of general workplace gossip. Um, they talk about how the boss um the boss did like um. Uh, did like to eat and drink. Um, the the boss did sometimes quarrel with the um, quarrel. Let me see with hide chewers and bone munchers, the uh, the trappers and the butcher sometimes. Um, but there didn't seem to be any bad blood between them. There is a particular uh, worker that you encounter, and the worker happened to be sitting outside the building um, and having a smoke um, that evening. Um, and that worker, the worker says um, that he heard something inside the offices, but the worker didn't have any keys, um, so it wasn't able to get into the office. Um, and then thought nothing of it. He didn't why, even hear scream. Why were they? But, why were they there after hours? No, it was just it was just off of work and sitting sort of on the back of the um the back of the building having a smoke. Hmm. I, I mean, this is like a wharf area. Like, there's nothing to do. What? What were they smoking? Just wandering around smoking. Can I? Like, can I check for lies? Okay, insight. Take an, roll an insight check. <laughs> okay, this this doesn't this doesn't seem right to me. Um, and it, it's an eight. Okay, so well, you turn, uh, you turn and you look at the river. You look at the wharf, and you're like, "Huh, this is a nice place to sort of sit and relax and just watch the river." And the water birds. I guess this is a nice place to sit and enjoy a smoke. Okay. All right. Then I'm done. <laughs> um. I'll give you one more thing, though. The for Hawk. The the person who was there did hear a strange sound, but he wasn't... It's not like a sound he ever heard before. Can I ask um, him to try to make it and replicate it for me? I need... I have a very bad imagination. Okay. I need I need an example. Okay. 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 I, I'm gonna have to do this, so... <laughs> I am... I am doing a goblin doing a sound. 
I don't know how come you heard that. <laughs> oh god, that was straight out of Monty Python. <laughs> mystical beast of ah. Uh... So like a guttural growl kind of sound. Yes, something like that. Very okay. odd. Yeah, it was very odd though. Um, um, kind of kind of bigger and scarier than like a dog. Um, but these are the soft hands, and they are. <laughs> Soft city folk and <laughs> don't know much uh, beyond that. Okay. So I go and rejoin um the the crew. Okay. Um so a th- a theory is climbing the roof. Yes. Um let's see Chanera and Gradol. Are you like just walking through the front door? Are you walk? Are you climbing? Are you cheering her on? <laughs> well, I was actually gonna volunteer to because I can, um, I can wild shape into an okay. owl and fly over uh, oh, the nice. roof and see what I see. Oh. So, okay. So, uh, go for it. I was gonna say I'll go inside and I'll talk to anybody in there okay so Gennaro walks in a theory is climbing the, the outside of the building and uh Gradol has transformed himself into an owl and is now flying yeah. above the roofs okay um we'll do Gradol first uh because he's flying and i guess he's faster um so <laughs> which buildings are you going to check out first Gradol? so uh which one is a theory already checking out a theory Mine? is on the butchers. Oh, sorry. Yeah. A theory go. Yeah, the butchers. That's what I was gonna say. The butchers. That's the the bone munchers. Yep. And that's the close. That's the closest uh, roof. Yeah, yes. it's right next to this. Yeah, climbing the bone munchers to the roof. Okay. And uh, when a theory looked at the roof, was there one particular side of the roof that had the markings and the claws? Was it closer to the bone munchers or closer to the fire boilers? That's a good question. Which side was I on? <laughs> Ooh. Oh, oh, the, um... uh, on the, on the... On the soft hands roof. Okay. On the soft hands roof, you... You... It's basically like straight in the middle. It's like right in the middle. It's not okay. close to any. Yeah, the the trail the trail goes from the window that you climbed out of to basically the dead center of the roof. Yeah. Okay. Something's happening. <laughs> Something's flying around out there. Okay. So am I now on the uh, the the butcher's roof? Do I see anything up there? Yeah. Okay. Let's make an investigation check. She gets a plus five. That's why she's rolling well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a theory rolls an eighteen. Um, you look around on the. You look around on the roof. Um, there is no blood on the roof. Um, uh, however, you do see a few. You do find some scratch marks. Um, but, but it doesn't make a trail. It's just um. They're like similar scratches that you saw on the soap maker's roof, and now like you found them on the. Okay, so something's flying and landing on these roofs. Um, but thinking. the, but the scratches on the butchers on the bone munchers' roof, they don't make a trail. It's just there's one spot with a couple scratches, and then that's. It. Something's okay. Bounding across these roofs. Mm-hmm. Like from one- other to the other to the other so does the owl see the same thing on every roof uh i think what i can what i'll do is is rather than just a straight like investigation check i'll try basically flying in a circle from the soft hands clockwise across the bone munchers uh the grain grinders the foil uh fire boilers and then back to the soft hands and basically just, yeah do a do a, a pass around the block and see what I can see from the air. Okay. Um, 
I'll let's do a perception check then. Okay. Doing a perception check. I gotta use the owl stats. So give me just one second. I gotta go to my extras on DND Beyond. Uh, and owl gets uh, plus four to perception. Fifteen plus four is a uh, nineteen. Oh wow. Okay. So, um, as you make your circling um, around the neighborhood, you notice that there is. You notice the same trail that a theory found on the soap maker's roof. Um, the trail of scratches and blood. You notice the scratches on the butcher's roof, but you do not notice any scratches or blood on the grain grinders or the fire boilers. Um, out of the four uh, buildings you checked, or four um, places you checked, only the soft hands and only the bunch of bone munchers have any signs of or of scratches and blood. Now, I, I don't know if this would take uh, too much time, but since it's the soft hands and bone munchers, would I be able to check out the uh, roofs of the building directly to the uh, west and the east, or would I be using too much of uh, too much time to do that? You can go ahead and do that um, since you are flying around. They're not that far apart, but with that, we're gonna I'll let you fly around and keep going, and we're gonna move to the next person. Let's talk to Genera. So, Janera, mm -hmm. you walk in the door. Um, you just, like, kick down the door? What, what do you do? <laughs> no, I, I walk in and um, look for the person in charge, maybe. Okay. Um, so, you notice some of the goblins um, uh, doing their business uh, cutting up meat. Um, you see some of the uh, animals hanging, and you see a few customers coming in. Um, so you, uh, one of the workers stops and looks at you and says, hello, uh, may I help you? And I respond, hello, yes. Uh, can you uh, get me the person in charge here? The, do, do, do you mean the, our guild leader? Yes. All right. So, um, and the, the worker asks, um, who... May I ask who who's calling him? Like, why do you need to see him? So I was hired to investigate the murder of the Soft Hands guild leader, and I would, wanted to talk to your guild leader to see if maybe they heard okay. anything. Right yeah. then. So then, um, okay, so so then that means um, uh, that means Mayor Tamron is uh. On the case, then I'm guessing he hired you. All right. Yes. Um. So the worker trots off, um, uh, to go get the uh, the guild leader of the bone munchers. Okay. Um. Uh, so this will take a few minutes, and in the meantime, let's have Michael. Um, you wanted to check out the other buildings here, Michael. Yeah, I, I just think that. Uh, you know, if there's only the uh, claw marks and blood on the soft hands and bone munchers, but not on the fire boilers or grain grinders, if something's bounding from roof to roof, it's either going to be heading from the soft hands to the bone munchers to the mayor's mansion or in the opposite direction. Okay. So uh, would we be able to fly from the soft when I see the uh, uh, blood over the bone munchers, basically when I complete the circuit? Uh, can I continue down and sort of just fly over the mayor's mansion and then circle back again? Okay, just the mayor's mansion? Uh, the mayor's mansion, and if I, if I can fit it in the time, because I don't want to use it too much time, uh, the grass weavers. Basically, see if there's if ah, this okay. thing was over traveling here. in an east-west direction or west-east. Okay. All right. Um, uh, okay. The mayor's mansion... Um, as you look for the ma at the mayor's mansion, um, you don't notice anything. Um, it's it, uh, this building is the largest building. It looks nice. Um, the tiles are in better repair than the other buildings around it, and you don't notice any sort of scratches or blood on the mayor's mansion. Okay, let's go actually now to a theory. A th oh wait, no, no, we did a theory on the roof. Um, are you going to climb down a theory, or...? Yeah, I'm going to climb back down. I'm not going inside the building. And okay. I want to go back to where Hawk is. Okay. 
Are you trying to be sneaky about it, or are you just sort of stomping your way up there? No, I'm being sneaky. I'm, I'm, yeah. Okay. Definitely being quiet about it. Okay. Uh, make a stealth check, and let's go to... Um, let's see. Hawk. What are you doing again, Hawk? Um, Hawk had, has rejoined the group um, okay. at the Bone Munchers. Okay. Uh, are you going to walk in with Genera or? Yeah. Uh, uh, Hawk later joined Genera after um, Genera made introductions. Okay. All right. A theory. <laughs> oh, wow. Stealth tech theory. That's, that's okay. her thing. <laughs> okay. Well, by All the right, way, so... I apologize if I'm not using Roll20. I yes. can't figure out how to do it, so I'm just doing the dice thing on my phone on the character sheet. We're just going to trust you. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's in our best interest. <laughs> yeah. I, I, there you go. As long as, as long as we're having fun, and I kind of would like the mystery to be solved within the two hours, and there's about an hour left, so <laughs> I'm not going to quibble. No pressure. Okay, so you're very sneaky. Um, the... You're able, as you're coming down, as a theory comes down the roof, you can peek in through the windows of the building, um, and no one notices you coming down. Awesome. Um, okay. So I'll just have a theory and Hawk meet at the um, at the door, basically on the ground level of the building. Oh, uh, where did you yeah. come from? <laughs> Would you, <laughs> what'd you find? Oh, so there's more scratch marks on the roof. Something's bouncing from roof to roof. So, um... A, a theory, how big do you think it is? Like, how wide were the claw marks? Because I, I haven't seen them. So how big an animal do you think it is? I think it's like a pterodactyl or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's coming down picking people off the roof. <laughs> uh, I nod because my knowledge <laughs> nature checks are probably just. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Do well, you let's see know what, what a pterodactyl is? I just nod safely and look like I know what I'm talking about because you know what? I deal with seasons. Like, it could be a. That sounds right. <laughs> Honestly, I don't do dinosaurs, but it sounds fun. <laughs> None of us do dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was the joke, but <laughs> how would I know? <laughs> uh, for anybody who's watching who's not an archaeologist, uh, archaeologists don't dig dinosaurs. <laughs> uh, we amuse ourselves. Okay. Um... Do we want to? So we want to go talk to the people at Butcher's Guild, see if they know anything. Is that right? Yeah. So I'm in. There. I'm in there now. Yeah. Okay. So are you playing femme fatale? Is there? Um, I no. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? Is, so, uh, what have you found? Uh, uh, nothing. Nothing yet. I'm no. waiting to talk to the guild leader. Okay, then go, go ask the question. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> okay. I just figured out how to do it on D20. You gotta go through the character sheet. Uh, Dory, there you go. Yeah, congratulations. You did it. You figured it out. Uh, um, I'm too old school. I'm too old school. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so... We have a theory, genera, and hawk. They, um, they're meeting in the um, in the entrance way in the uh, the front. Um, what would that be? Uh, vestibule. I, I can't remember. But the 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 greeting area of the uh, Bone Munchers Hall, and the guild leader comes in, being led by the worker. Let's go. So let's go over. Alrighty. And so this is him. This is uh uh this is the guild leader of the butchers, of the bone munchers. Um 
he has a little bit of a sour face on him. Um, he he's not carrying the cleaver, uh, but you do notice that his uh, clothing is uh, stained um, with blood uh, from being a butcher, of course. And you notice in his ears there are little bones uh, he uses to um, as piercings, and a little necklace of uh, uh, teeth, like pig teeth. Um, and you notice most of the other workers also have piercings in their ears or little uh, bone necklaces. Okay. Um, so he introduces himself as Glexal Bone Muncher. And he asks you, well, how may I help you? Okay, let's see. <laughs> Uh, were you or any of your workers here last night? Um, well, we we usually don't stay um, after dark because it's very difficult for, for us to do our work well without the daylight. Um, so I uh, we closed up shop at about sunset. There, uh, I was still here, and a few of my workers were here uh, cleaning up, but most of them had uh, had left by the time uh, the sun had set. Okay. Did you or anyone see or hear anything strange? Um, the the worker who had brought the leader, um, they pipe up and say, "Hey, um." I I didn't see anything, but I think I did hear a little bit of a growling. But I couldn't tell what it was. <laughs> Can you repeat it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, you really want me to do it again? Do it again? Okay. okay. Uh, hey! Like that. <laughs> oh. It sounded a little constipated, you know. There's a <laughs> I, another one of the goblins perks up. It's like, no, 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 that's not the sound. The sound was more like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that was the sound. <laughs> oh, that makes much more sense now. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. Okay. Uh, in which direction did you hear that sound from? Is it from over by the soap makers? Yes. Um, I did hear something over from the soap maker. Okay. Was um, it on the roof? I couldn't tell. What, I I just I was in the direction of the building, but I couldn't tell exactly. Um, okay. Uh, and. There's a few more uh, goblins sort of are trying to get the sound just right in the background. <laughs> can I can I knowledge uh, local knowledge check on um, rumors of any kind of large beast in the area? Okay. All right. So you're thinking. I'm 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 curious if I have heard any um kinds of like news or rumors um among in the city about something like this, like any kind of beast. Okay, and this is wait, is this Hawk talking? This I'm, is I'm Hawk. Still, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Hawk. I, I, uh, I I'm still not used to your voices that yet, so <laughs> I'm trying to make sure. Mm -hmm. Um Okay. So why don't you, and you're thinking about an animal, right? Why don't yeah. you make a nature check? Um, yeah, I was, yeah, I was thinking in terms of like rumors in the city of something like this. Okay. Um, well, uh, let me see. Check. Well, your nature, well, nature check, well, nature just for animals in general. History, uh, history I think is supposed to be more for like, people but your bonus for both is the same so just yeah, so, roll okay. Doesn't matter. okay okay uh 
15. Okay. So for you, Hawk, you cannot think of any animal that's that large. Um, you can think of bears and wolves, right? There's, you cannot think of any um, large animal besides that. Um, but wolves wouldn't be getting on the roof, um, and neither would bears. Um, so that's about it, but that doesn't seem like the right thing. Can I do a knowledge arcana check? Okay. Um, if you're thinking of an arcana check, you are. this is going to be a magical animal then. Yes. Okay. So go ahead. Make an arcana check. 16. Okay. Nice. So... Um, are you just thinking to yourself, or are you trying to discuss with people? Um, I'm discussing with people. We can think out loud. So... Uh, I tell them I can't think of anything. Um, if Gridal was here, maybe we could ask him about his knowledge nature and see if this might match an animal that he knows. Okay. If this doesn't match so, anything I know, I think it might be and a, Yeah. So, Genera and Ethiri, go ahead and make uh, nature and arcana checks. And Gradal, um, mm -hmm. you are flying... Um, and <laughs> okay, <laughs> wow. Okay, so uh, remember, I'm taking the first roll because uh, right now the settings are set to um, advantage. Uh, but anyway, Gradwell, you're flying about, and you check out the last roof, which would be the last roof would be uh, the grass weavers. You didn't yeah. you. Did not notice anything. Um, it's just another roof, no scratches, no blood marks. So in all of the roofs so, you have checked, there are only markings on the soft hands and the bone munchers. Okay, I'll fly back to where they are at the bone munchers and meet up with the rest of the group and tell them what I tell them what I saw and that I uh, checked out all the nearby roofs within a certain distance of the soft hands and the only ones I saw. The head marks for the soft hands and the bone munchers. Okay. All right. Okay. So here at the bone munchers, um, so a theory, uh, Genera and Hawk are discussing and talking. Um, uh, Genera, I'm guessing, is this role for nature or for Arcana? Um, I guess nature will be the first one. Okay. You want me to roll again? Yeah, for Arcana, because you're you're all brainstorming and trying to think of what it could possibly be. Okay. okay. There, I rolled again. Okay. So, looking at all of your nature checks, and especially <laughs> both Ethereum and Chanera, um, <laughs> this doesn't seem to be like any kind of animal, right? There are no pterodactyls around. You have not seen or heard of any sort of pterodactyl. <laughs> Um, or Archaeopteryx, or Dimetrodon, oh, no, no, um, <laughs> trying to think of another, uh, pterosaur. Oh, okay. okay. I don't, I don't, I don't, you I don't just know. You just picked about dinosaurs for an archaeology con. <laughs> we have uh, no idea. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Um, we know all about goblins. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it doesn't seem to be a giant bird. Like, if from from comparing notes, theory a theory did look at the scratch marks, and I think Chanera looked at the the marks in the paper, right? Uh, that was Hawk. Um, oh, that was Hawk. Yeah. Okay, well, well, your discussions with Hawk. Um, uh, Hawk got a pretty decent role as well, so. You can tell that whatever this thing is does seem to have claws. Um, they're fairly large claws, and it's some of the claws kind of have a kind of have a hand quality. Like there's like five fingers. Um, uh, yeah. 
Okay. It doesn't. It doesn't quite <laughs> seem quite like. If you had a bear, because if you've seen like a bear's hands, it just has like a rake, kind of a raking look. Um, mm -hmm. um, but this one doesn't have that kind of raking look for the marks. It sort of squiggles like a, like, like a, it's not a paw. <laughs> uh, you, you know what? Um, <laughs> Is this Sasquatch? <laughs> okay, um, let me see. It's oh, no. possibly a Sasquatch. It's possibly a Sasquatch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is um, your arcana checks are okay. So Sasquatch is within the realm of possibility. Okay. <laughs> God. <laughs> you know, now, folklore, legend, myth, it's all good. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yep. Lexal, the leader of the Bone Mine, she's just sort of staring at you, kind of a little bit impatient, like, is, you called me out here to talk about Sasquatches and pterodactyls. <laughs> <laughs> the other workers are actually quite interested. Now they're sort of like, what sound does a pterodactyl make? <laughs> no, no, not that. No, it makes a different sound. Okay, so I, I ask him um, if he knows of any, um, just I, I ask him the same questions about like, you know, the enemies of the soap guild boss and, you know, if he was in any kind of trouble or had any issues that he know that he know of or if there were any kind of like personal things, like scandals recently in soap making. Uh. He sort of sighs and is like, the only thing, the only problem that I had, and I kept telling him, I kept arguing and, and uh, complaining about him, was that he had to lay off the dang sausages and cured meats because he was starting to get gout. And um, the other workers were sort of like snickering. And as you can see in the drawing, uh, actually, this particular goblin does have swollen feet. <sighs> Oh my god. Um, but other than, other than that, no, no, no. Um, uh, Cell D was, was an honest worker, did his work. Um, uh, he was a hard bargainer sometimes. Uh, since we, we do, uh, do business with the, um, with the fat, um, he does buy fat from, uh, er, between the business between us and um, and the, and the, when the meats and animals come in, he does take some of the fat. Um, so there is a little bit of uh, arguing over the prices and how much he can get. But no, I've always known him to be a, a good and honest uh, worker. Can I? Um, does he does he seem to be on the up and up, or or does he seem like he's trying to hide something? Okay, insight check, please. All right. This is finally I'll be able to do the the damn th thing here. All right, clicking insight. I'll go oh, back crap. to the what I got. <laughs> nice oh. roll. <laughs> nice. Yay. So oh. what 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 did I roll? Oh yeah, seventeen plus four. What's this over here? Okay, so uh, again we have to go to the settings. It's not a big deal, but the settings right now are set toward advantage, so it's automatically rolling twice. Um, but we'll just take the first roll just to make it easy, so we don't have to deal with it. Got um, it, got it, got it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, 21, yeah. Yeah, I am looking yeah. at the chat in Twitch, and yeah, we are rolling 20, like, every time. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, so you are looking at... You are looking at Glexol, and Glexol does seem a little upset. Um... Not quite upset that you're that you're. Well, he's a little bit of. He does seem a little bit upset, and he does seem a little bit nervous. Um, uh, he does seem to be uncomfortable that you are here. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh. Oh wait 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 wait. Uh, sorry. Uh, Gradol, you were yeah. still flying in, so that means you, as an owl, fly in through the window, land, <laughs> transform, and like right in front of him. And then do the inside check. 
<laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh, now we know why he's nervous. <laughs> yeah, Everyone is sort exactly. of like, ah, what was that? It's an owl. Ah, no, it's a, go it's a goblin. Oh, it's Grandal. Um, but the, the roll will stand. Uh, Genera, I'm guessing this is also an insight check? Um, it was an accident. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Um, but the, the roll will stand, and uh, Grexel does seem to be sort of upset and nervous that you're here. And I'll, uh, I, I sort of press him a little bit and seem, and, and just as, as Gretel, I'll just go ahead and say, Hey, you seem kind of upset, buddy. Is everything okay? <laughs> you seem kind of nervous. Of course, I'd be nervous too if some guy right across the street just got murdered in the most gruesome <laughs> fashion imaginable. <laughs> yeah gulps a little and it's like yeah that's quite upsetting and an owl bursting into my into my guild hall and, and interrogating me yeah it, this is all kind of upsetting and he sort of backs up a little bit okay I, now you said the insight check um, stands okay, so I have to, I'm gonna ask able to know whether he's um, nervous because okay. of what they did or because of what he's been asked about no no it's it's he is nervous about what he's being asked about he is nervous about the uh uh that there are people here investigating hmm. okay. well i guess that we're just gonna have to Look around a little bit and try to figure out what's going on. Are you sure there's nothing that you don't want to share with us, buddy? Um, I, no. like, Gary, what, what do you Gary. mean share? Like, I, I roll an intimidation check. I'm like, share anything Whoa. that might be pertinent to the case. And I roll intimidation. Okay, go for it. Ooh, oh gosh! Wow. <laughs> the rest of us are scared. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, so you sort of walk up to him. You sort of do that kind of like uh, how would that be? Um, that sort of John Wayne saunter up to him and like try to look down at him and then go, "Will you share anything?" <laughs> uh hawk hawk clears her throat <clears throat> yes try this uh, right um some of the goblins in the background are, are chopping in here like dunk 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 from the meat cleavers and uh will you share anything off in the back somewhere um the so uh glexol just sort of gives you a kind of quizzical look and and is just sort of puzzled, like share with you about the investigation. I don't really know anything. The the workers here seem to have heard some sort of strange sound that might have been a pterodactyl or it might have been a Sasquatch. But uh, now, when he says that he he doesn't know anything, but other than that, I know nothing. Can I can I tell whether or not he's he's lying or not? Can I tell whether or not he's bullshitting? Okay. Um <laughs> uh, all right, let's make another insight check. Uh right. I also want to make an insight check. Okay, go ahead, roll for it. Nine. Grad all thirteen. Okay. Um you can't tell if he's lying or not. He does seem angry. He does seem sort of upset. Um, the draft team this, but you cannot tell if he's lying or not. Can I go sneak? I'm going to go sneak in back while they're chatting. And okay, take a go look ahead. around inside. All right. Um, are you, you just want to sneak away from the conversation or you don't want any of the workers to see you? I, I don't want the workers to see me. I want to see if I see anything unusual inside. Okay. I'm going to sneak around. It's going to be tough, I know. <laughs> OK, go ahead, roll a stealth check then. Uh, but that's your thing, though. Yeah. <laughs> that's insane, but OK. 
Damn it, Siri. The computer did it. I mean, <laughs> okay. So what do I see? I see okay. like I'm going around inside the, you know, where they're cleaving stuff. Um. So you just hear the chop. Let me see if I can do a sound effect. The chop, 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 chop of them um, uh, butchering uh, the meat and the animals. Uh, you hear some of their laughter and them chatting with some of the customers. Um, and this building, this building does, actually, let me think about this for a second. Um, okay. No, this, this is a one-story building, so you're going to check all around the building. Okay. Um, you do not notice anything outside of um goblin traffic and goblin business it's just it's just a building it's a it's a butcher um but no one notices you um so you are free to check or go into any room that you'd like so do they like what are they butchering like what animals are does it um, look all normal yeah it's it's sheep pigs sorry they're not hiding Sarah. a goblin you're not hiding a goblin body in there. <laughs> uh, no, you do not see a goblin body. Um, okay. You just see uh, goats, sheep, pigs. Okay, I've come back out with the group. You know, um, they didn't. They didn't realize I left or came back, but I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> you're, uh, you're back. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, do we want to? What my suggestion might be to half of us um so does uh does Gradel report to us what uh he observed uh above because does you do you tell us that or yeah yeah i i tell him what they uh what i witnessed from above and i also sort of like whisper my um what i was able to figure out from my initial insight check with the uh the leader of the bone munchers so i'm guessing you're gonna wait for him to actually leave the room um, yes. Um, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so he he again says like I'm busy. I am. I have customers to attend to. He leaves, and all the workers just sort of leave and leave you alone. And I'm guessing you're just standing there in um, in one of these uh, side areas, whispering to yourselves. Or do you leave the building? Um, yeah, we can we can leave the building. Um, yeah. So I think we should... go ahead. No, go for it. I said we should go because didn't we get the tip to go to the tavern, which is where the uh, what's his name that got murdered? Yeah, the, where he went for his business meeting. We need to ask people there. So I, my suggestion would be for us to split up and two of us go to the tavern to ask questions, and then the other two go and try to follow the tracks. Um, because yeah. it, uh, it looks like there's a direction to the claw marks, right? Well, there were only two on the roof of the butchers and the soap makers. Those were the only two places um, where we saw the marks. And so it, there's no other blood or anything like that? Because if we're looking for a body, there's going to be, like, how were they able to cover the blood trail? Yeah. It's good that, yeah, that's why, I, I mean, it, thinking somebody flew off with it because <laughs> it wasn't on the ground it was on the roofs okay um we oh. can go we could split up between the fire boilers and the tavern we haven't um, been to the bakers yet either i think they mo worked most closely with the bone munchers and the skin sacks right yeah. And then also the, sh the sheep friends, which is the guild that I'm from. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, Graudal, because you're with the she uh, sheep friends, you would know that for some of them that raise um, that raise livestock, that they do sell them to soft hands. Um, so you're you're generally familiar with that. But if I remember right, you're you're you basically just like to lie around in the pastures and pick flowers. So I'm not sure how. Yeah. Much oh, you're not interested in that part by the, the way, business. that reminds me, the, the the leader of the bone munchers, as he was walking away, I do pick out one of my flowers and hand it to him and say thank you. 
Uh, he is again, Hawk looks, okay with that? <laughs> <laughs> he he like he takes it, sort of nervously sniffs it. It's like hmm, smells good. <laughs> sort of sort of tucks it into one of his ear piercings and then walks away. Yeah, the one I handed him is actually it's it's the sort of blood red daisy or like blood red petunia and it actually fits really well it, it works great with his, the whole decor that he's got going on in his clothing <laughs> fabulous it matches his apron um okay now now you, you as you're preparing to split up i'm just wondering if you wanted to ask michael uh about the brainstorming earlier. Remember that you had decided that it's not it's not a pterodactyl. It's not there are no animals that seem to be able to do this. Um, but you weren't sure if it maybe it might be a Sasquatch or not. Would you like to ask Michael now? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There, I'm pretty sure there's no such thing as a Sasquatch, but based on what I saw, I can do a nature check if you want me to. Okay, so roll a nature check and Roll an Arconic check. Um, make sure check for the animals and Arconic for anything magical. Okay. So I'll do nature and then Arcana and results okay. are... I actually did better on the Arcana than I did on nature. Who the hell knew? <laughs> and especially since you're the druid. Okay. Um, so you largely agree with their conclusion that there are no animals around that could do this. Um, however, your arcana check, you actually remember something, and especially for you, you are a goblin. You remember this, but the others do not. A theory especially, a theory will not know this, but Genera and Hawk might be vaguely familiar with this. Okay, Gradol, uh, when you were young, your grandmother used to scare you with stories, ghost stories. And one particular ghost story she scared you with was of a boogeyman-like creature. A creature that is known, or at least in the stories, is known to eat goblins. Ooh. And this creature is called the Bar Guest. Ooh. It is a large, fearsome creature, kind of like a wolf, um, but uh, much larger, scarier, large claws, big fangs, um, and is the bane of every goblin child's existence. Oh. I just, I just sort of, like, start, like, pawing at my bouquet a little bit. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. And I just sort of explain exactly what it is. This sort of like this this and and what specifically would I know about the bar guest? Is it is it only this beast? Can it also like can it uh fly? Can it change shape? Can it uh what is it what is it known for besides eating goblins so it is it is known to be a shapeshifter um oh. it actually is known to shapeshift into the form of goblins uh uh oh it it is um and it is known it cannot fly, um, but it does seem to have the ability to disappear. Like it can just like um, vanish. It seems to vanish before people's eyes. Like people lose track of it. It's or it's or you're just standing there and boop, it's right in front of you, and then it proceeds to eat you. Where does oh. it hide? Um. Uh. Well. So. Again, only Gradol is gonna know this one, but Gradol, um, you're—it's not known to hide in like caves or trees or anything like that. That's not its point. It's—it prefers to be 
like among goblins and then sort of snatch them um, when people or when goblins least expect it. Are there any telltale signs that we should look out for according to the, the stories? Um, are there any telltale signs we should look at according to the stories? So I'm, I'm guessing, I don't know, Gradal, do you want to be the one that like sort of quivers and shakes and kind of cries telling the story or? Um, I'll, I'll quiver and, and shake and again, just sort of like pull, pull up the flowers on my back. Shall I just give all the information? As this happens and you can just sort of give all the, uh, give all the information. Otherwise I'd just be repeating what you tell me. Okay. Oh dear. Um, oh my. So the the bar guests there are no there are no sort of physical signs. Like if you just look at a transformed bar guest in its goblin form, it doesn't give off any sort of signs that it's a, a monster. It's just a goblin. Um you can sort of still see some of its face as you would it, it's its Spargus face resembles its face as a goblin um now there is one more thing um it doesn't it doesn't like fire or rather it doesn't like large amounts of fire um that it's sort of scared of big bonfires um, little candles don't bother it, but the uh, big, big fires just scare. Uh, something bigger than a torch. It has to be a lock, and that's about all the information you have. Are are there big fires that are used in making the soaps at the soap makers guild or the brewers and the fire boilers guild? Uh, so. They're they're not big bonfires, um, exactly, but they're it's they're big vats. You know, it's like a big cooking vat and they do have a... they don't it doesn't have to be a fire per se, they can just use charcoal and things like that. They just need to be hot. Um so they don't really have big fires there. Okay. Folks, I don't have any fire spells. I went the ice route. So if anyone oh. has any uh, fire well, casting, please, please let me I, know. I don't, but hear me out, guys. Because the Bone Munchers Guild leader was acting very suspicious, maybe he is this monster. And maybe we should go set the butchery on fire. I <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 60 real quick. There's a lot of oil and fat that'll light up. Uh, okay, I'm gonna break the. Um, I'm just gonna uh, break the game, the fourth wall, for a moment. But when I was discussing this in the um, in the Discord chat, Sarah's first suggestion to solve this mystery was to burn the section, the, the neighborhood down. And we've come full circle, and now that it's truly the suggestion you have. <laughs> yes. Who's going to do that? Turn it all down. <laughs> and, just, and and I'm sorry, which I couldn't tell the voices. Which character made that suggestion? <laughs> Genera. All right. The I monk, the one that's supposed to be, so you know, nice. Like that, that look that your dog gives you when you're doing something that <laughs> is... I like, can't figure out that where they sort of cock their head to the side and be like, "What is wrong with you?" Um, just to you know, exhaust all all avenues is uh this this effect that of of shape shifting is this a magical effect? Is this something that can be um, found with detect magic, or is this kind of an innate ability? Ooh. which I could not find. Um... That's a good question because I do have detect magic. Okay, so uh, I mean, like the stories don't really know, uh, because technically that's like a um, that's a meta gaming question a little bit. Um, uh, people just know that it shape change, uh, shape changes. They don't really know if it, they don't really know if it does spells or doesn't do spells. It's just it, it changes shape. 
Okay. Um, mm-hmm. I light uh, my 50-foot hemp and rope on fire, and I bring it and I throw it into the uh, butchers. Yes. <laughs> Hob- hobgoblins for life. <laughs> oh my god, you pyro. <laughs> It's, it's, a, it's a bunch of hemp and rope. It's on fire. Like they can put it out pretty easily. I've got a lot of water. I've got water manipulation. It's fine. Okay. I, could sneak, I could sneak around the back and do another one too. I, I was going to suggest that I could try a charm person. I got a charm person spell I could try on the uh, on the leader of the Bone Munchers Guild. I want to see who runs. Ooh. Um. Okay, well, okay, so you're going to have to be a little more precise. <laughs> All right. I walk in to the Bone Munchers, and I call everyone back in and say, I have more questions. And then I kind of, like, turn around, and I, I take the rope out, and okay. I use my tinderbox and the oil I have to start lighting on fire, and it's just like a 50-foot thing of rope. And uh, I put some torches on it too, and I make a fire. Are you are you doing that in front of people, or you do it beforehand and then have it ready when they come in? I kind of have it ready to go um, so that it lights pretty quickly because I want this to get big fast. And I'm okay. gonna run around the back. I want to run about around the back to to see if anyone comes running out. Tries to stand at the back. I'm just having this that this is fine meme. Oh, okay. Um. Okay, so I I I just want to. Be clear. Just how big of a fire are you aiming for? Like how many square feet? A five foot by five foot square. So pretty, but big and hot. Um. Okay. So because I've got uh, torches and I've got you know things that'll catch pretty quickly and hemp rope. Okay. So you're standing in the welcoming area, um, with your hands full of flammable objects. To- fire going as the workers sort of come in sort of giggling making ah! pterodactyl sounds um and they all come in and the leaders is coming in uh gregsall comes in looking a little bit cross and then when they see the fire that you started in the building <laughs> they all look surprised <laughs> um so none of them are sort of holding back their their emotions, and the leader Gregsall is like, "What the hell are you doing?" <laughs> um, if you each of you can roll an insight check, I, I'm guessing because this is what you're doing. You're all trying to see if he, oh uh, he's God. reacting or not. You're <laughs> yes. trying to smoke out a monster. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> um. Uh, let me. Who's sneaking around the back? Was Hawks? No, no. Uh, no, a theory. I, I, yeah, I was sneaking around the back. So I guess I didn't see that, did I? Shouldn't yeah, roll. probably not. Okay. Okay. Ignore um, mine. Okay. So Janera and Hawk, they all just look angry. So you're you are preparing yourselves to either put it out, or, you know, keep going with it because they all seem upset. Uh, Gradol. Um, the bar, the, the bone munchers guild leader, he does look, uh, nervous. Um, more than just angry, uh, he does seem a little bit frightened. Okay. Can we roll for insight? Uh, well, Janera and Hawk have done insight no. and are not quite sure. Graudal does yeah. notice that he seems scared. Okay. 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 Uh, guys, I think it's him. Uh, I so think it's him. No, I just Hawks like, my hands. Takes I think two it's him. from the flames and starts approaching the leader with 
um, the uh, the torches and starts p trying to like poke him with the fire. Okay, you're you're gonna come up to him poking him with the torch. Okay. Well, I'm like, I'm get close. like I'm I don't I still don't know. I'm just going off of what Gradle says and I, I guess I trust the flower guy. Um, okay. So Grexal begins shouting um at the workers to put out the flame. So the the workers are sort of grabbing um buckets of water or cloths and they're going for the uh, wait, did you start it on the floor? I'm guessing it's on the floor, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're going for the floor. They're trying to put it out. Um, uh, Grexal is sort of angry at you for coming at him with a torch, but he's not really looking at you. He's sort of looking at the fire, at the the big, uh, the larger fire on the floor that you, that was started. Um, I it, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was to say, I want to. I'm I'm gonna ready my crossbow. I'm in the back of the building, and I'm coming in through the back with my crossbow ready in case he runs out. Um, are you sneaking or yeah, just walking? Yeah, no, I, I'm sneaking. I'm, I'm okay, go ahead and roll a stealth check. Hiding in the back there. Okay, roll a stealth check. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> roll twenty. Okay. <laughs> Rogues, <me>. man. <laughs> <laughs> no. the, I know. I'm, I'm just watching um, in case he runs out. Okay, so as you're sneaking into the back, not even the cus you notice the customers sort of waiting there bewildered and sort of impatient waiting for their cuts of meat, but they don't notice you, Ethereum. Um, uh, yeah, my crossbow ready in case, yeah. Okay. Uh, so it was Hawk is the one sort of shoving the torch in his face, right? Uh, I have several torches, you know, because, like, if I'm going to light something, like, I light something. So I've got several torches in his face, yeah. Okay, so both hands, each has a torch. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I don't I don't know if you've ever watched Japanese horror, but also, like, when people try to put a kind of, like, curse on people, they also stick, like, the candles in, like, a headband. Are you doing that, too? Um, <laughs> sure. Uh, I'm... I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I'm also sort of threateningly walking towards uh, mm. the leader of the Bone Munchers Guild, but I'm also just keeping an eye out at Genera, like, what? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my idea worked, guys. <laughs> okay. So, Gle Glexal is starting. Well, well, let me pull up his picture. Um, so, so, sorry. Yes, go ahead. No, no, I'm not. No, I'm. It's just, um, okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna adjust this little picture in the. Uh, I don't know if um the people on Twitch can actually see this. Uh, I'm making sure that you're all surrounding him in the uh <laughs> in the roll twenty site. Um. Okay. The okay, so as you're sort of shoving these torches in his face, he's kind of angrily like trying to back away and trying to swat them away. It's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Like, what's the point of this? I I roll an insight check and and um, see if yeah I don't know I'm not sure I didn't really plan past this you're not, point. okay. Um, you don't really need an insight check to know that he's nervous and angry and upset. Um, I mean, he is scared of fire because it's right in his face. Um, the other goblins or the other goblin workers are sort of kind of surrounding you and kind of like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Ah! Um, so let me see here. Let's actually, let's do this then. All right. Why don't we do this? <laughs> this turned into such a dumpster fire. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is this is perfect because I think we're. I think let's just it's, do it. It's, it's perfect Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. and see what happens. Uh, so. 
uh, Greg Saul, like, shoots daggers at each of the adventurers, uh, furrows his brow, and uh, lets out a large howl deeper and louder than you've ever heard, and <laughs> nothing like the goblins, and nothing like I can make it. Um, oh. <laughs> and... I want to be hurt. <laughs> Uh, uh, Grexal then transforms into a large, terrifying monster. Oh um, my so I I don't have the picture ready, um, but it is a picture of the bar guest. It, uh, it is large. When you think of a dire wolf, like a D&D dire wolf, it looks basically like that with a longer tail. Um, it's his hairs bristles on his back like a razorback boar. Um, his ears are large and pointy. Um, his his clothing actually tears off his body as he goblins are small size and he transforms into a large size. He actually starts to fill the room. Um, he snarls and has large like saber tooth fangs. And his his fingers end in huge claws. Um, so he snarls and actually looks specifically at Gradol, and he's like, and he says, "I didn't think I would have enough goblins to eat for my bluebeet, but you will be the seventeenth. No. No. Um, so everybody, roll for initiative." Oh, yeah. <laughs> we click on our character. Wait, where? So, uh, are we rolling initiative? Initiative. Okay. Uh, where, I'm trying there to find are where it is. in the Twitch chat for the growl. I'll do my best to do it. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I bet, I bet it sounds. Okay. I'm in the East Coast, or everybody else is West Coast. I bet it sounds like a fisher cat. I'm trying to find where <laughs> I can All roll right. for initiative. Where did you guys find? I didn't. It's at the top of your character card. It'll top. say, yeah, top armor class card? and then initiative. Yeah. There it is. Thank you. Oh, great. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, you guys have more fighting skills than I do. Okay. Did I? Oh, no, a theory. No, I need to hide. I'm not a fighter. <laughs> okay. that, that, is that bad? Did, am I okay. Well, you're already <laughs> Okay. Hawk. Hawk is going to go before Genera. Um, uh, uh, you have a plus two bonus. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, usually bonuses go first, but it's, it's not a big deal. Okay. okay. Um, um, Alrighty then. I... Oh, oh well, I'm sorry. Sorry, excuse me. You, you're going first in the... Um, you're going first in the group, but group. Uh, Grexal actually... Yeah, Grexal actually did get a higher initiative. Amazingly. That's fine with me. Okay. So, what, what what was the uh, the bar guest's initiative? Uh, twenty-two. Twenty-two. So he's yeah, he's got the highest initiative. Okay. So Grexal lets out that. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm here all night. Um, anyways, <laughs> okay. Uh, um, so Grexal, I, I assume you you've all surrounded him. You well, yeah. he's a large size, so I'm assuming that every, you're all right next to him. The room is not that large. Um, actually, we can even I actually prepped it. Let's see. Go here. Uh, let's see. Let me go up there. Okie dokie day. 
Let's see. And I remember I wanted the werewolf. Let's see. Uh, free assets. Were creatures. Uh, just to make it feel more like Dungeons Dragons, uh, since we have the uh, so the okay, there we go. Uh, oops. Okay, whoops. Okay, whatever. Uh, anyways. Oh no. Okay, there it is. Okay, and I'll make all of you surround him. <laughs> It'll make me feel good. <laughs> okay, there we go. So, um, Grexal is going to bite. Uh, he's going to go for a bite of uh, Growdoll. Um, oh, no. He really wants to eat you. Duly noted. Okay, so let, okay, so we're gonna like, yeah, we're gonna rotate this. Ah, rum, 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 munch, 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 munch. Okay, let's see. Roll the hit. Um, okay, let me do that in the chat. Let's see, he's gonna hit. Uh, maybe. Let's see. It's a fifteen plus six. Oh, that, that hit. Yeah, that's okay. right. Yeah. Class is 15. Okay. All right. Okay. And for the damage, let's see. Uh, 1D. Uh, plus 4. Oh, I can't do the plus 4. Okay. Uh, let's do 1D. Oops, sorry. <laughs> okay. Oh. One. One damage, plus four. Uh, that's five damage to Gradol. Okay. Take oh. a bite out of you. Nom, 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 nom. Okay, I'm, I'm very surprised that that is how the bar guest of my nightmares is, just by going nom, 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 nom. But, but I'll, uh, I'll take it. Well, what can I say? The stories are never quite that accurate. <laughs> okay, go Hawk. Ha Hawk, you're next. Okay, um, I'm going to cast uh, Frostbite, um, and so that's going to be uh, the target must make a constitution saving throw, and on a failed save, they take 1d6 damage and have dis and it has disadvantage on the next weapon attack roll um, before the okay. end of its next turn. Okay, so uh, it's a constitution save, right? Yeah. Okay, it gets a plus two. Oops, sorry. Uh, huh? Isn't that what it is? Okay, uh, one, D, 20. I forgot a space. A six plus a two, eight. Um, so I'm pretty sure uh, the Bargus fails. Um, so now it gets a, what was that, disadvantage on? Uh... the It's next attack. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, great. So Hawk waves their hands about and uh ice shoots forth hits it and the Vargas howls and pain um from the spell next person genera well, the, the second hawk is going to um move uh five feet back okay so let me see i believe I or as far there. yeah as or it just makes a move out um does yeah. It's, okay. Hawk is going to move away. Ten feet um, if possible. And probably now, an attack of opportunity. Yeah, I was about to say, like, you're gonna yeah. move away and the Oh, that's actually pretty good, because then it's yeah. disadvantage. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So okay, I'm, I'm then... gonna, yeah, twenty feet away. Let's make it twenty feet. Let's be well like, it's not that big of a room. Twenty feet means you're outside the building. Uh, well, I'll move as far away as possible, given the constraints of the room. Okay. Uh, you'll move that far. Okay. okay. And you're back up against the wall. Okay. Okay. So... Okay. So, but it, it is at a disadvantage. So let me roll that second one. 
still pretty good. Um, 17 plus... Uh, the Barghast actually doesn't bite you. The Barghast tries to claw you. Um, uh, the Barghast, you know, sort of uh, hisses. I'm not, in, I'm not interested in hobgoblin flesh and just claws you. Okay. And does uh, a D8. So uh, even with a disadvantage, uh, they hit? Uh, a D8 plus four damage. So even with disadvantage, they hit? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because uh, if you notice okay. my two rolls, are 17 and 18. Yeah, okay, yeah, I yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And the damage is eight. Ouch. Eight plus four. That's 12 damage. Okay. Okay. All right, next up is uh, Gradol. No, uh, he, yeah. No, no, sorry. Genera. Genera's next, sorry. Okay. Um, let's see. I think I will... Hmm. Can I attack it with my uh, scimitar? Okay, uh, go for it. Uh, roll to hit. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> um, you swing wide. And it just, it's just, it's too, you're too surprised by having this ginormous monstrosity in your face. And you, you swing way too wide. Um, and it just sort of like glowers at you. All right, next. Let's see. Oh. This is just my curiosity. Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry, no, no. Uh, go ahead. Uh, actually, Genera, if you'd like to do something else, uh, you can move or a bonus action. Um. Let's try a bonus action. Okay. So what do you have I'll in do, mind? Um, I have what's called a flurry of blows. Oh. Okay, so flurry of blows means you use one of your key points and you hit again, right? Yeah. Okay. Um. Wait, since... Uh, usually with flurry of blows, I think you're supposed to punch, but it doesn't matter. Okay, go ahead. Uh, you're gonna roll an unarmed strike then. Go okay. for it. Uh, right. Oh. What's your attack bonus? My attack bonus. Let's see. Unless it's a ten, I don't think it's. Um. I don't know where it's at. Yeah, well, it probably doesn't matter in this case, but it's good to know. Let's see. Um, we are... If we're looking at Genera, her plus to hit should be a plus... I think a plus three. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought it was. Yeah. Oh, okay, so, uh, so, actually, you know, you make two more unarmed strikes. Sorry, you're making two unarmed strikes, so go ahead and roll again for your second one. Okay. Uh... There we go. Eleven. All right. Um, eleven plus three. Okay, that hits... Um, okay. So go ahead, roll for damage. I think you, it's a d4 plus one. Yes. Wait, did I do that wrong? Yeah, you did right. Okay. Okay. So that's a... So you hit it for 
good damage. All right. Um, okay, so uh, you swing with the uh, scimitar and try to elbow it with your other hand on the on the on as you swing around and you miss both. But then as you keep sort of twirling around, you kick it in the jaw. Um, there's a little bit of a crack, but it does not seem very phased by it. Okay, Gradol. Or, or sorry, Janera, are you going to move or anything? Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and back off. Okay, where are we? Um, uh, I, it is 10 o'clock. Come on, we're still playing. <laughs> 10 more minutes, please. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I figured we can like let's kill this it. thing. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. All right. Um I guess I'll back off about five feet. So you're just sort of like there? Yeah. Okay. And he's already used his reaction. So. Yeah, so that doesn't, yeah. Yeah. I'm your meat shield. <laughs> your how, is it, how is it that the <laughs> little goblin druid is the only one so close to this thing? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a little surprised because the Borgus has already said he's going to eat him, specifically him, <laughs> and you've all abandoned him. <laughs> bait. Yes. <laughs> Flower bait. Oh no. <laughs> you still you still see the flower in Grexel's ear. Okay. Yeah, Gradal, it's actually your turn. Okay. So it is how many people are within thirty feet of me? Uh within thirty feet of you? Uh one, two, three, four, it's twenty. Everybody's everybody's uh, within twenty feet of you. Or yeah, okay. it, it was really close. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I, I I sort of steal myself against the thing of my childhood nightmares, and I basically decide that I'm going to do what I can to support. Uh, everybody else, okay. uh, I'm going to cast Bless. So that means everybody gets an extra D4 to all their attack rolls and all their saving throws. Uh, okay. Very nice. Okay, wait, everybody gets Bless. Yep. And then as... Let's see. And then as a bonus action, I'm going to use my uh, Druidic Circle, which is a uh, uh, circle of the Shepherd. Okay. Appropriate for the Sheep Birders Guild. Yes. And uh, with the uh, Circle of the Shepherd, I can bring in a Spirit Totem that does a particular action, Bear, Hawk, or Unicorn. Yes. Uh, so... I could do the bear spirit, which gives advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. I could do the unicorn spirit, which gains advantage on all uh, ability checks. But then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the hawk spirit. So everybody essentially gets the keen sight of a hawk, uh, which means that not only does everybody get advantage on perception checks, but I can use my reaction to grant advantage to any attack roll in uh within that radius so uh, what i can do is the next person who rolls an uh an attack roll i can uh grant them advantage on that attack roll okay so so like when maybe i like i know a theory is next up in the he's gonna go after me and it's concentration or it's that not sorry the yeah. hawk thing is not concentration but bless is so I I figure I'll uh, when a theory takes her shot from the shadows, 
I can grant advantage to that uh, to that role. Okay. So I, actually, I assume a theory is actually kind of over here on the side. Um, okay. As long as she's are you going to move? Uh, no, yeah, she, I'm, she, gonna, she, I'm um the the flower goblin is is basically like this thing is straight out of his nightmares but he knows that everybody needs to stay within the 30 foot radius. So he's, he's standing up to this thing. Oh, wow. You're so brave. <laughs> All the goblin bards will sing of your exploits after you're gone. I mean, which will be very <laughs> soon. <probably. laughs> okay. Um, all right, then, uh, next is a theory. A theory. There. Lisa. Did she disappear on us? Maybe. A theory, are you there? Our guest get to her already? Um. Huh. Okay. Well. Um. Okay, so I assume she's going to come back in a second. Now, I, oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Uh. So that first strike. That. Uh. Oh, you just run in there with a short sword and like stab it in the back. <laughs> nice. Um. Okay. Now, the other thing is, uh, a theory, I'm guessing you want to use your sneak attack, right? Wait, are you using your sneak attack or your crossbow? Or what? It doesn't matter. Uh, uh, sorry, short sword or crossbow. But you are going to use your, your sneak attack, right? Um, if you're using your sneak attack, you're going to roll the damage for the short sword and the sneak attack. Um, you're level three, so I think your sneak attack is only just one die, one extra 1d6. So, a theory needs to... Oh, no, sorry. Hers is... It's a 2d6. So, um, so I think a total damage for you is a 3d6. All right. Okay. A uh, 3d6 plus your dex bonus. Um, let me see. Your dex bonus uh, plus three. Um, cause it, uh, short sword I think is short sword. I believe is also a finesse or can be anyway. Uh, cause technically for your, your sneak attack, you need a finesse weapon. Oh my goodness. All these rules. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, let me see, what is it? Okay, well anyways, we'll just count it. All right, 10 damage plus your dex of three, so it's 13 damage. You just come up from behind and just shank it right in the ribs. Dang. Okay. And then you run away. <laughs> uh, okay, sorry. You have done a total of 15 damage to it. So, f oh, what? Sorry. Don't ignore that D4. Sorry. It was just. I am trying to clear it. It should have been minus 43. Oh, whoops. Okay. Trying to get it. To, there it goes. Minus 15. Okay. So, um, you've done 15 damage to it. It howls and screams and sort of thrashes as uh, that steel sort of pierces it between its ribs. Okay. Um, it screams again and, like, looks right at Gradal and, like, licks its lips, clavers, and opens its jaws wide as it tries to take another bite out of Gradal. 
Okay. Uh, and it gets a, I think a plus four to hit. Uh, yeah. Uh, a plus six to hit actually. It's a plus six to hit, so it's a nineteen. Does nineteen hit you, Brad? All. It does okay. indeed. So it's gonna take a really nice big bite out of you. Um. Oh god. All right. Uh. It takes the biggest bite it can out of you. Okay. Um. Wait. Bless this. Plus doesn't help you right now, huh? It just helps you with ability checks. It, it, with uh, saving throws and attack rolls. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, so it does a total of 12 damage to you. Ooh. Okay. I'm tremendous... still up. Barely. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's sort of like licks the blood as it sort of uh, splatters around its mouth um, uh, and continues to stand there. Next. Um, Hawk. Next is Hawk. Okay. Um, I'm going to cast uh, Magic Missile at a second level slot. So okay. I get an extra um, missile. So I think it's a 44 at that point. Yes. 44 plus 4. Yep. Go ahead and roll for damage. Oh, and plus four. So that's f eight plus four is 12. Sorry, I forgot Whoa. to add the plus no, four. That's fine. Okay, so eight plus four, that's 12 damage. Okay. All right. So um, these uh, points of magical light shoot from your fingertips, whiz about the room, and then strike. Um, the bar guest and its head and its shoulders and it sort of whimpers a little uh, under the force of it um, and you did a total 12 damage it okay so it's quite a bit you've now done a total 27 damage to it um, it's it's it looks fairly it looks a little bit bloody and reeling about a bit but still stands above you uh, quite menacingly all right let's have uh oh I forgot um Gradol, you needed to roll a concentration check. Um, yes. The difficulty would be 12. For the, um, let's see. It's a, I believe it's a wisdom save. Is straight wisdom or save? Concentration. Or? I thought it was constitution. Uh, or maybe it's wisdom. Oh, sorry. It was, it was uh, constitution. I'm forgetting. Let's roll right. that d20. Eight. Oh, do you have a plus? Uh, I, I have a plus one to constitution. So it's, that'd be a nine. So that's a failed constitution save. Bless is unfortunately gone. Oh, no. So um, the strength that you all felt earlier from the bless spell kind of fades and you feel back to normal. Okay. I think now is, uh, Hawk, are you going to move at all or just sit there? Uh, no, Hawk is sitting pretty. Okay. All right. Next is Genera. What would you like to do? Um, I'll go ahead and use my crossbow. Crossbow. All right. Go for it, Genera. Uh, take a shot at it. Are we doing any flanking bonuses here? Oh, you know what? Um, I believe flanking, you have to be on the other side of it, right? So we can do like, flanking. Yeah. Uh, um, so someone has to get behind it or, or have to be on the opposite side of it. Oh, no. Okay. I'm, I'm right in front of it. I'm right, so, I'm right in the face, so I'd be, anyone behind it would be flanking it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Genera, um, pulls back or like, steadies her crossbow, pulls the trigger, and she's still kind of nervous, and it flies past over her shoulder, and ding! The bolt like sort of things into the uh, the wooden wall behind him. Okay, are you going to do anything else, Janera? Does, does she have another attack at third level? Uh, well, you are the monk, right? Um, yeah. So, uh, I mean, I'm a little bit surprised you haven't been punching it. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, true. 
keeping my distance. Okay, so I you have at least one. Let me see. You have three key points. You have two more to spend. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I'm looking it up. Yeah. Uh, way of shadow. You're doing way of shadow, was it? Yeah. So it looks like I have. Let me see. Where am I? Scroll got all messed up here. So, so if you're I... doing Way of Shadow at mm -hmm. your level, you can cast a few spells. Darkness, Dark Vision, Pass Without Trace, or Silence. You can also do Minor Illusion. So let's see. Um, what would those do exactly? Like... Um, so darkness makes a big cloud of shadow. It's magical blackness, it's magical darkness, so things mm -hmm. cannot see through it. Not even with your dark vision. Um, if you do dark vision, then you can see through darkness, but you already have that. Pass without traces if you're sneaking around, and it gives you a bonus to your stealth check, basically. Okay. Silence makes it so sound cannot be heard, so certain spells cannot be cast. Okay. Silent my minor illusion is, you know, you do a kind of magic-y, Merlin-y, like, illusion. It's a small thing, though. <laughs> if you do silence, I will not do the growl anymore. <laughs> um, okay, let's go ahead and do the minor illusion. Oh, thank you, Short Round. I don't know if you're all noticing the chat on Twitch. Um... Uh, Short Radis is wondering why there's not enough fire in here. <laughs> yeah, it was like it just went out, right? <laughs> yeah, because I didn't put out the fire. Yeah, the goblins would have put out the one on the floor, and I guess you dropped the torches? Sure. <laughs> we should just throw in the fire at it. Okay, all right, then. Thank you, Short Round, because that actually is a really good thing. Um, Let's start to put some fires down. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna put like yeah, a fire right here. Okay, there you go. All right. Uh, okay, so Janera, are you gonna do anything other than? Yeah. So I think I said I was gonna do the minor illusion. We'll take we'll take back the crossbow hit if you just cast the spell then, if that's the case. Okay. Okay. Um, ooh, that's a good one. Like, okay, so what are you going to do with the Minor Illusion? Who? Let's create, and you can think short round for this, let's create the illusion that there is fire all around it. Okay, so your thing can only be a five-foot cube. Okay. So, um... So you're just going to choose, and I'll, I'll, you could draw it on the screen if you'd like. Um, just pick one of the squares to show where you want the fire to be. Okay. If you know um, how to do that, or you can just tell me. Let's see. Change the color. Does that work? Okay, so yeah, so you're basically just gonna make it so it seems like it's where it's standing is on fire. Okay. Yeah. All right, that's fine. So, okay, next the crossbow shot. <laughs> okay, because <laughs> it was terrible. Uh, so Genera sort of waves her hands, and this large five foot by five foot flame erupts at the bar guest's feet. It looks down at its feet. And you can tell there is a look of fear and terror in its face. Um, okay, next, uh, Gradol, uh, make a or a generic. You can move if you'd like, or you can just stay there. I'll stay where I'm at. That's fine. Okay, Gradol, it's your turn now. Okay, uh, you were saying make a something. Um, 
No, no, no. It's uh, it's your turn, Grodal. You can take an action. You can move. Uh... Oh, I'm healing my ass. Okay. <laughs> okay, go so, for it. So that is um, cure wounds. Okay. So how do I? Let's see. So that's. Sorry, I'm just going to the details. Uh, cure wounds would be two d eight plus something. I'm Let's just trying see. to figure out. Um, two d eight. I think that's like a wisdom uh, bonus, something like that. Yeah. So it'd be two d eight plus four. Okay. Okay. Uh, wait. Are you casting at a level one or level two? Uh, that's a good question. Um, Cause, I'll go. Cause... Level one is a one d eight. Level two yeah. is a two d eight. Yeah, I I, th I think I'll cast it at level two. Um, because he's really going after me, okay. and if I don't do something, I'm dead as a doornail. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll okay. use up one of my two precious second level slots for a two d eight. How do I uh do the straight roll on uh? Uh, so what you can do is you can type it. So you'll type like just two d eight. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, you, you have to do the you have to do the the slash. You do the slash, roll two d eight. No. Okay, so let me see if I could actually do. Let me see if it'll recognize this, like that. Can you see that? Yeah. Oh, with with the quotes. Uh, without the quotes, without the quotes, um, uh, because if I if I do the slash in it, then it thinks it's, I'm doing a command. So. Got, oh, you got to be kidding me! <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, but you get back seven HP, right? Uh yeah, I get back I get back seven wa whopping HP. Yeah. Um. Oh man, hard luck for Gretel. Oh, uh, so you see him waver his hands and begin to speak but he's shaking and shivering in the presence of this this goblin boogeyman and is only able to hail himself for 7 HP all right are you going to do anything at all anything else uh, can i do a uh, cantrip as a bonus action or no cantrips unless you have some sort of special uh, mechanic uh, cantrip is another action what's your okay. hp like do you need to withdraw um <clears throat> Well, I already used up my action to heal myself, so I can't, I can't well, disengage you the bonus action. So I can't, I can't really disengage. If I disengage, he yeah. still has a reaction, right? Yes. This round, yeah. So in terms of what's available to me as a bonus action, I really don't have much. So yeah, so so really in terms of bonus actions, I got nothing. So my turn is done, and hopefully okay. next time he goes after me, he doesn't hurt me for more than eleven more than eleven HP, or I'm I'm unconscious. Eleven? Uh, okay. Yeah, I was down to four, and then I got eleven, and then I got uh, seven yeah. back. Like that. Okay. Yeah. All right then. Uh, okay, so you're sitting there shaking in your boots. Oh, sorry, you're not wearing any boots. I'm pretty sure you're barefoot, right? <laughs> uh, uh, you no, know, I'm 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 wearing shoes, okay. but I'm glad I wore my brown pants today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Next, it's a theory. What are you gonna do, a theory? All right. So a theory. If you are directly behind the monster, kind of where the fires are, coming from that direction behind him, you get advantage because that's flanking. Um, so it'll make it easier to hit him. Um, and since he is distracted by Gradol, uh, you do get your sneak attack ability. Um, so you can shank it pretty hard again. Sneak attack.
Where is where is Lisa? I wonder if she's having technical issues. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Maybe she'll pop in. Oh man. Uh, I mean, she's still logged in, it seems. Oh, there it is. Okay. Hey. Um, with the whip, with the whip. <laughs> oh no. Um. Okay. Um. Uh, I'm assuming a theory that you're gonna be like right behind the monster. Um. Just so you can get that flanking bonus. So a theory sneaks up behind, and there's a big crack of the whip, and it strikes it right in the middle of the back, right in the spine, and it screams in pain. So, Theory, um, you are going to roll for damage. A whip, I think, is a d4, um, but we're also going to give you that sneak attack damage, so you get a total of, um, I think it's 1d4 and 2d6, right? That's what we were saying. Okay, so 2d6, 11, and then a d4 for the whip itself. Uh, 44? I don't think you get a 44. Has gone out. Okay. Well, actually, you know, uh, no, no, no. Um, you rolled too many d fours, but no, that's fine. Uh, actually, no, because the the sneak attack damage did quite a bit. So actually, oh, he one whip. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, a whip, I think, is a d four damage, and um, oh wait, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, uh, it's a d four damage, but you rolled a forty four. You rolled too many dice. Um, I, but no, it's fine. I'm not, I have no idea what happened. No, th th don't worry, don't worry, your theory. Th that's fine. <laughs> okay. My internet stepped out and back, and I started hitting tabs, and I think I think I fucked it up. Okay, no, <laughs> fine. Pretty, pretty sure I fucked it up. <laughs> um. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, with that, you. You strike it so hard in the spine that it sort of jerks upward and its eyes glaze over, its eyes roll in the back of its head, and it falls over dead. No way. Oh. Wow. <laughs> okay, so we're going to call it dead. Uh. <laughs> okay. Ruddle breathes a huge sigh of relief. Yeah. <laughs> Begin, then begin, just begin druid crafting flowers all over the thing's body while occasionally whacking it on the head rhythmically with this staff. Oh my god, I love that. <laughs> well, we saved the goblin town, and I just want to say thank you to our game master. Yeah, yeah great job, Bill. Great job. Yes. We no, I, I, I always applaud the players because you, you're the ones making the game. I'm just sort of, I'm giving you a place to start, but you're the ones that really take it um, in interesting places. Okay. I think your growls um, helped. I, I think yeah. we, need, we need to explore more, more of Goblin Town because your characters are amazing and they should not die tonight. Yeah. We need to keep playing them. Yeah, we need to, we need to play Goblin Town more. This is awesome. Yeah, it does. Yeah, that was fun. Um, it was a lot of fun. Um, so okay, I I I really do want to thank you all. Give you all a little bit of a clap. Um, now, um, I'm glad that you enjoyed it so much. It. Um, no, we are past the time. We are past the time of the con. Those of us on the East Coast, it's already 10.30. Um, I'm on the West Coast, so it's only 7.30 for me. Oh, uh, And I personally, yeah, I'm personally 
super stoked about this game. Um, mm -hmm. Now, oh, yeah. yes. Oh no, I was just gonna say everybody's still in the chat. I have had I've had Twitch up while I'm going, and everybody who was here before is is was before ten o'clock is still here. Yeah. Yeah. So, like. I'm really stoked about it, but also kind of a little bit disappointed because, well, because I draw, I drew 17. I know comments. there's so many. <laughs> why we need no, to do this. Your goblins. He did Come it. on, he man. He's I want to really play this every week. Uh, I'm down um, if you guys are. <laughs> yes. Oh, if I can if, get this, if I can get time, I'm so down. For every um, month, whatever it works, it's fine. Um, yeah. Um, the the other thing is, okay, so I'm gonna have to take all my notes and put them together, and I really do want to put this out to uh, all the con uh, attendees and everybody else who would like it, um, because as a sort of one shot, the the basic premise of the game, if you guys would allow me to, to explain it, actually, is that um, bar guests, bar guests actually in the book are a real. They're they're in they're not in the main book. They're in the Volo's Guide to Monsters. But their big thing is that um, they they're actually a demon sent from a demon that hates the Goblin God, and it is supposed to eat seventeen goblins. That's its mission in life. So that's what's kind of fun about this one is you get 17 goblins. Well, I messed up. I need to draw one more goblin. But there are supposed to be 17 goblins here. And you pick one of them. And one of them gets to be the bar guest. And you basically have to run around trying to catch the real one. But all your goblins are people we love and adore because you, 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 you personalize them. Yeah. Turn the yeah. goblin from just a goblin into people we know and love, and so that makes us want to save all those seventeen goblins. And that's cool. Yeah. Um. And and another tip for anybody running the game, if they actually want to run this one, is if you pay close attention, all the goblins have different ears. Um. So if you happen to catch a glimpse of the bar guest before you kill it, then you can tell which one of the goblins is the bar guest by the ears. What? So that's just a little bit of a tip. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing, Daryl. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, thank you for playing. Um, I'll... We, sh we should do this next year. <laughs> yeah, we should. I mean, I mean I'll, I'll stick around on SCAs. If SEAs are virtual, we'll just like oh invite my God. Yeah. back to DM for us. For sure. For I, the if if I if we can work it out the schedule, it'd be great, yeah. Well, thank you everyone. Well, thank you.